There was one team that stood supreme in 2000, the Bomber Blitz. And then there were the Challengers. The Dynamic Demons, a team on the rise. Carlton with its superstars in Blue Thunder. And the High Flying Hawks in winning finals form for the first time in a decade. For a complete review of 2000, that was the season that was. Five great videos to watch over and over again. They're out now at these stores. It was the year of the Bomber. Masters of the day, champions of the night. A record unequalled in the annals of football. Relive the greatest moments from the greatest season in Essendon's history on Bomber Blitz. And replay every glorious minute of that grand final win. Two videos to treasure from Australian football video. Bomber Blitz and the 2000 AFL Grand Final. Part of the WEG Grand Final collection. They're out on video and available at these stores right now. Break into the vault for Christmas. The sensational 70s. The electrifying 80s. The decade that delivered. 30 years of heroes. Six and a half hours of highlights for only $59.95. Go on, break into the vault at these stores now. Footy in December. It's a video answer to a real fan's prayers. There's Bomber Hits, the best of season 99. Out of the blue, Carlton's heroic charge against the odds. Plus, that was the season that was. Highlights from the whole season. If you love footy, you'll think it's Christmas. They say a picture tells a thousand words. One image creates its own story. From each frozen moment, you perceive a flash frame which never goes away. The blurred wonderment of seeing a mere mortal stepping on the surface of the moon. And in our smaller world of Australian football, the heart-wrenching emotion of an old warrior bidding his last farewell. This has become the most treasured image in the history of our game. Australian rules football is such an intrinsic part of our being, of what Melbourne is about. The dramatic moments this sport produces has formed chapters in people's lives. Our teams, our heroes, our passion, our heartbreak. But those defining moments are rarely kind. Often, they are cruel. If one picture could haunt the life of James Hurd, this is it. A young champion, struck by chronic injury, hit by the realisation that his stellar career may be over. Are these tears of pain, frustration or fear? In the months afterwards, many suspect this may be the last page in the album of James Hurd's football story. Like the ultimate sadness of John Coleman, a career stolen by injury, like the bitter faces of vanquished gladiators, visions of despair. It takes a fraction of a second to freeze an image. But the road back from chronic injury takes months, years. Doubt becomes your companion. New kids in red and black carving out a new era just as you'd been part of in 93. And you'd love to be part of it, to be part of the battle, to enjoy the achievement. Yes, 
you permit yourself to dream. Welcome to a remarkable story, the James Hurd story, one of incredible triumph over adversity. Back in 1993, I made a comeback for the Bombers and it would prove to be one of the best decisions of my entire life. After some coaxing from Kevin Sheedy, I agreed to join an exciting group of youngsters on the quest for an AFL Premiership. For me, it was to be my lucky third. Amongst this precocious group of talented young players was an unknown teenager from Canberra, James Hurd. And while that great day in 1993 was the end of a long journey for me, for James, it was just the beginning of a roller coaster ride of massive proportions. Everyone says it's a dream to play league footy and that it's what they want, but um, I think a lot of people say that and, and they want a lot of other things. But for me, um, you know, in the early part of my time in Melbourne and in Canberra, uh, that's all I ever wanted. I didn't, I didn't think about anything else, and that might seem a feeling narrow, you know, it might be a narrow life, but it gave me a purpose in life, and, and I wanted to do that. And I was fortunate enough in 92 to meet a guy called Danny Corcoran who came to the club and he, he showed me how to um, funnel my energies into, in, you know, work hard, but showed me how to work hard and work properly. But nobody at any stage didn't think he could play in the under-19s. When he did play, he could play. Uh, but he just, you know, had, uh, just had an operation there and um, that was another injury that he had, but nobody ever reads about that. So even right from the early days, he's, he's probably had to overcome some of those sorts of problems that's getting, getting him to a match actually attracts. When James joined the famous club in 1990, the name Heard was certainly not a new one at Essendon. James's father, Alan, played a handful of games at the club, while his grandfather, Alan Senior, played over 100 during the 1940s. It's fair to say they both gave young James a helping hand. As a kid, I wasn't a standout player or anything, and no one, I don't think, was going to draft me, but. Um, my grandfather sort of got onto Brian Donahue and made sure that Brian uh, got down and watched me and, and, and got me to Essendon. You think he put a bit of pressure on the club? I think you? he might have, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's good at that. I think the best advice I ever gave him was when he came down here, I said, make yourself the player. What's that mean, he said. <laughs> and I, we just discussed then what a player should do on the football field. But I, I wasn't one who was determining whether the coach was going to whether I was the coach or not, because I wasn't. Um, yeah, Den Dennis Pagan was coaching the seconds, and uh, I think we were playing at the Junction Oval. And um, I'd played all right, you know, just an average game. And But um, Dennis came out and just said, look, you know, if you're going to get anywhere, uh, deservingly, I'd you know, probably, if you're going to get anywhere, you've got to play a bit harder, do more running, da-da-da. You didn't probably have a great day today. And I think my grandfather was over the back, and he said, it must have been a different game than I was at, you know, and that's... And that's him, and he just wants the best for me, and that's good. I was getting to the end of my career, playing in the reserves out at uh, Victoria Park against Collingwood, and uh, it was a cold, windy, sleety rain sort of a day, and uh, and there was this uh, old fella out behind the fence in a in a rain jacket, standing over there on his own, and you could hear a beller every now and then when James got near the ball, pick it up, son, and uh, and I looked over, and that's, that's who it was. It was Alan, Alan Hurd. Almost the mark to Mercury. James quickly developed into one of the game's preeminent players. He goes. He had all the attributes of a champion. Silky skills, poise, balance and time. Something that all of the truly great sportsmen possess. In terms of getting a player like him, they're, they're so hard to find because they can play tall and small and uh, he can go into the midfield and um, he can actually then go and play key key back or key forward and they're so hard to find those sort of players and when you do find one they're, they're gold. He led the Bombers to a preliminary final in 1996 against Sydney, one that was as famous for Andrew Dunkley's indiscretion as it was for Tony Lockett's point after the siren. On the Monday night of the Brownlow, following Essendon's heartbreaking exit from the finals, a battled scarred James Hurd was acclaimed as one of the game's great players. So, uh, Mum and Dad back in camp will be uh, very proud and I'd just like to thank them so much for all the time they have given me and uh, also to my grandfather who, and all my grandparents really, who really gave me some great time when I was younger and 
just the fact that the time they gave me when I was younger has developed me into, well, Brownlow medalist. <laughs> I uh, can't believe it. it. Yeah, I'm allowed to say it. It's, uh, it's quite amazing. As joint winner, along with Michael Voss, Herb was at the top of his sport. Little was he to know what was about to follow. Since that golden night, James Hurd and the Essendon Football Club had been taken on by a variety of comers. Probably it didn't do me any favours. I think that what it did is it meant that I, I got a lot of exposure, probably overexposed, and um, people learned to, the general public learned to, to dislike me a fair bit because of the exposure I got. And, you know, I got, I got a tag of being a very, a very nice person and, and, and that I don't think went down that well after a while. I think people got sick of that sort of image and it meant that um, I caught a bit of stick for it over the next three or four years. A 14th place finish in 1997 catapulted Kevin Sheedy into conflict with his board. Now what about the future, Kevin? Is it the end I'm of an era? That, the following year's first round finals exit at the hand of North Melbourne did little to sate those restless for change at Windy Hill. And the marshmallows are flying out here at the moment, Bruce. Uh, a few are hitting Kevin, but luckily they're very soft. Breaches detected in the club's salary cap by 1998 saw the club find a quarter of a million dollars and denied it top-end draft selections, driving yet another dagger into the bomber heart. And if all that wasn't bad enough, Heard, Essendon's symbolic leader, had been severely hampered by a series of hamstring, calf and foot injuries. Just seven games in 97 and 13 in 98 were not the return expected from a player on huge money. One with a blossoming media career and one carrying the hopes of a team on his slender shoulders. Did you ever feel guilty over those couple of years where you didn't play much for the club? Yeah, very guilty. I still do. I still, I still feel that um, you know, I owe the club so much and I'm trying to repay them now because I, I missed two, two or three years of football and, and was being paid quite handsomely for it. But that, that's not the... That, this might sense, that's not the part I feel. The money's not, is not what I, how I want to repay them. I just want to repay them for the, the way they stuck behind me and the, and the things and the people around the club that didn't sort of ever stop believing in me. Someone aware of such things, five-time Hawthorne Premiership player Dermot Brereton plunged her deeper into the mire, questioning whether or not the Bombers were getting value for money for their physically diminished champion. And I reckon that must have really sort of scarred his soul, actually, to sort of think that people were thinking like that, because nothing he'd done uh, was, was a lack of preparation. I mean, he just, he, it was bad luck. He worked as hard as anyone could possibly work to get where he wanted to go and to get where Eston was, was entitled to expect him to do. Some saw it as a fair comment, others as a low blow. Heard, before Burton's column, had been untouched by the media's scathing pen. But with his body now failing him, his time in the hot seat had arrived. It wasn't so much that I was being criticised the way I was playing, because I wasn't playing, I wasn't able to get on the ground, so I wasn't, that didn't worry me, but criticising whether I really wanted to play footy and whether I was willing to um, make the sacrifices to be, to be playing footy, and um, I knew that that was, that was just wrong. 1999 loomed as a year of redemption, a season when the club would collectively fight back. It had defeated arch-rival Carlton in the opening round and would convincingly account for the Kangaroos the following week. Wrap it up, Derek Buick. Oh, you little beauty! But that game would play itself out against a grim backdrop. Yet again, James Hurd would fail to see out a game. Yet again, his feet had failed him. Gee, it's a sorry side, isn't it? I'd reckon their tears coming from the face of James Hurd. Very disappointed. This time, however, the suffering seemed deeper. James Hurd needs to play footy. He can't. You generally moment. don't recover from uh, three navicular stress fractures, particularly once they've had a screw inserted in them. So it was at a point where even the specialists were telling us, look, this isn't uh, going to happen. You know, time, time to give it away. Not to be too dramatic, but that night against North Melbourne, to be on, be on crutches for six weeks and not be able to walk for another six weeks and, and to go through all the hard work you have to do, I just didn't know at that stage whether I was, I was going to be able to do that again. And when I, when I broke my foot, I just thought, gee, 
how am I going to actually do this again and then try and come back and play footy? And, and I was probably just in shock as to whether that was able to, I was able to do that again. I think the last time I you know, see him uh, in tears on the bench is, you know, when you're sitting home in the cool, cold darkness of midnight at night when you're saying, and you're watching your club's team, the videos, and you're saying, well, see, this guy's really, uh, he's going through torture, you know, in many ways, and uh, you, you really do feel for them then. All that James Heard had come to mean to Essendon was threatened just two weeks into the season. His proud family lineage had reached a sudden, jolting halt. The club his grandfather and father had represented, the club he was expected to take into another golden era, was now faced with the prospect of life without the third herd. Start to feel sorry for yourself? Oh, yeah, every day. You know, I, I went into hospital and felt sorry for myself, but um, my wife's pretty good at making sure you don't feel sorry for yourself. She's. Uh, she, you know, she, she tells it how it is and tells a lot of people worse off than I was, and that's, that's the way it is. Away from football, James found an escape. The birth of his daughter Stephanie was a distraction he desperately needed. Made me um, have a focus on myself a bit, <laughs> onto her, and, and really forget about footy at certain times when it's good, you know, take the focus off that, but just really made it a lot happier world to be in because she's just so so good and really enjoy spending time with her. Mm. With his wife Tanya, the herds were going to travel the tough road to recovery together. He'd always believed that if you work hard at anything you could achieve it, whether it was scholastic or sporting or whatever, he'd always thought that that, that was one of the inbred things inside him and um, to not be able to do that I think I think that was particularly frustrating and, and something that maybe, not that he'd walk away from the game, but that he certainly asked himself lots of questions. Go! Come on. That's why, Walt. Come on, push it up, push, push. The name John Quinn is these days spoken of reverently at Essendon. But previously, his most notable work had been done with Olympic athletes. With Hurd's career now balancing delicately, Quinn was about to produce a gold medal winning performance of his own. Travelling through Spain together on an end of season trip, Quinn and Hurd had it out in the front seat of their hire car. There's a lot of people out there who are talented athletes and individuals and uh, if they didn't carry so much damn baggage around with them, they'd be a hell of a lot better, you know. And uh, for James Hurd, um, we went to Andorra and uh, he left the baggage at the station there. And uh, when we came back from that trip, uh, he was uh, uh, almost uh, emotionally renewed and ready to go and, uh, and, and he's been working through that all year. You said you're whinging, you're sooking hurry up and, and wake up to yourself and it took about three hours for him to say that but that's what he said so um, I sort of got, got a shock of my life when someone said that to him because no one had really said that to him before and decided that he was probably right. But Quinn's magic would take time to work. Heard would spend 1999 sidelined, worried about his own ability to come back, desperate to rekindle his self-belief. McCurry goes for a bounce and another. Might take us all the way. Mark McCurry, have a look at this. The kick is magnificent. Oh, what a goal! As his teammates stormed their way to an 18 win season, he would seek internal inspiration in order to overcome his career threatening situation. The Bombers have taken all before them so far this season. They're just a couple of hurdles still to overcome. Preliminary final day, 1999. Little did this group of footballers realise how seminal a day this was to become. Sure, the Dons were without Hurd and Scott Lucas, but they had feared no one, no thing, all season, no matter how brash the Blues might be. Players ought to know who weren't here in 93. Essendon were over the salary cap. They cheated. They cheated to win the flag, so we're going to get it up on this week. I never take it for granted. I appreciate all your help. I hope we stick it up the bombers next week. Hey. The football world knew that this would be Essendon's day. Straight for Wallace, the mean bad man. Can he cover himself in glory? He's lost it and Murphy takes it away. That could be the turnover that cost them. Murphy goes towards the half forward line. Ratner's got it. He'll take his time and that could just about seal it. Murphy... We got rolled and uh, personally I think we've still got to get that one back. I don't think we've got that one back yet. So I think that the, the team, that the squad's there, the... I think we've got to keep the pressure on this squad to make sure that we 
We uh, just don't think that this year was all about last year's. I don't think that at all. No matter whether we won last year or not, I thought we had a still a good enough side to go on this year. So I don't really believe that we've uh, got 1999 back yet. It may have seemed a million miles away at the time, but as the sun set on that dismal day for these bombers, a new and brilliant dawn was soon to rise. I said to myself I was going to give it one more, one more crack, and this was um, the year 2000 was the one chance I was going to give it. And, and if, if I had have, hadn't have worked then, well, it's probably a pretty good chance that I would have given it, given it away. But um, I said this was, I was going to have one more go. It's been said, indeed, it's even been sung that from little things, big things grow. And the seed sown can spring to life in the simplest of places. There can be little doubt that few losses have been treated as cataclysmically as was Essendon's 1999 preliminary final loss to fierce rivals Carlton. Empty, unresolved, gutted, Essendon's players hauled themselves from the canvas and regrouped. They gathered at a Melbourne restaurant and set about ensuring that ultimate defeat would never visit them again. I can't remember the mission statement you know, off, off by heart, but it was about being part of a, a group of players who collectively wanted to be the, the most ruthless, toughest and hardest sides in the AFL and one that was feared by the rest of the competition. Um, that, was, that was basically our mission statement. We basically came up with a mission statement that was going to encompass what an Essendon football player wanted to be all about. And uh, I mean, not going into intricate details, but um, you know, basically just put down our goals and what we wanted to achieve for the year and um, as, as a group of players we amended that at the end of 99 and uh, just amended it for the year 2000. I was in tune with a bit of that but how it was going to come out was going to have to come from the soul of the team itself so from that point of view it was, uh, yeah, it was good and it was good to find out, you know, deep seated in the players' mind that they'd had enough. All the talk in the world, however, was to count for little as the 2000 season approached. With news filtering from Windy Hill that Heard's rehabilitation was progressing soundly, his absence from pre-season teams wasn't surprising. But the football world was anxious to see Heard back in harness. Wonderful mark. <laughs> has taken a beauty. They would have to wait until the competition's semi-finals, Essendon's fourth Ansett Cup game before they caught their first glimpse of the club's captain. Great hands by James Hurd. Hurd, 25 metres out, quick snap. Listen to the roar. It tells the story. James Hurd has kicked it. You know, my brain was thinking, is my foot sore, is my foot sore, is my foot sore. Once I got through the pre-season training um, and played a game, I was pretty confident that I'd get through the year because I wasn't having any pain in my foot. But uh, during pre-season, that was when the, the hardest time about trying to forget about the injury, that was when it was hardest. Even myself had uh, doubts as to whether the, you know, the, the the injury problem that he had would, you know, the foot would hold up. But uh, it's a real cre credit to the medicos and to uh, all the people that have supported him, and uh, and to particularly to Jim himself, just in the way that he's handled it and uh, and worked his way back into the uh, to, to playing the standard of footy uh, that he is. Significantly, Essendon won that competition. Heard played in the final, contributing the way we knew he could. The Bombers have won the Ansett Cup. It was the first real sign that maybe, just maybe, the man in the number five Guernsey was back. Pre-season promise guarantees little. It may help membership departments and it might satisfy sponsors, but premierships aren't won in February and March. Oh. Oh. That's great the real test of Essen's resolve and Heard's capacity to absorb this game's ultimate tests would come in the home and away series. It took both little time to stake their claims. Nicely done by Long to Heard. Heard breaks away, 65 metres out, long kick. This could carry the pair of them, it's a goal. As season 2000 wore on, two things became obvious. These dons meant business. Right. And James Hurd was reborn. Towards McCurry again, another one to Hurd. James is going to win the start in the last quarter. I sat back about round 15 and just we'd won 15 in a row and just thought and and smelt the roses myself. Had a week where I just relaxed a bit because I thought 
how can you not, you, I don't, I don't get through the end of the year and not appreciate this for what it is because, um, you know, 15 wins in the end, it was 24 out of 25. It was just an amazing effort. The team's record-breaking run through their unbeaten 20-week surge is likely never to be equaled. Their results were the manifestation of the drive they carried toward a destiny they thought owed to them. He runs to 40. Oh, you it. In terms of a group of individuals who want to achieve something, they're a great group of people. They, uh, they care for each other, they care for their families, and, and the way they go about their footy and their training, they're so competitive, you know, they compete for, they, they just compete to get out of the race first, they compete to who has a drink first, they, they're competing all the time, you know, you go for a walk and there'll be someone slagging off at someone else in a good humoured way, but it's because um, their t-shirt's better than this t-shirt. And I think that what that builds is a great nature, if they're competitive amongst themselves and they care for each other so much, when there's an opposition, they're not going to let them come anywhere near us, and that was the, the great thing about this year. As for Heard, he turned time on its head. A one on one battle down there. Oh. <laughs> but it was one on one until James Heard came along. His gifts, one. hidden for three years, were on display, seemingly brighter than ever. His triumph over personal adversity was a long way toward being realised. But there was, ultimately, only one gauge by which that would be measured. And that moment wouldn't come easily. Drama, so constant a bedfellow of James Hurd, would revisit him before his comeback was complete. Look at Kevin Sheedy. What a performance of Bonners. What about uh, your first impressions of Kevin Sheedy? Uh, it took me two years to make him, to, 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 to sort of discover what this man was about because I was just so awestruck being an Eston supporter. I, I couldn't talk to the bloke. I mean, he was just, he was Kevin Sheedy and he'd kept, uh, coached Essendon in two premierships and um, I, I just couldn't, I just felt really embarrassed sitting next to him or I, I used to almost run away from him because I was that awestruck by him. We're really totally two different types of people as a, as a, a coach and a captain and a, and a young player coming through. And so uh, it's, it's been a good journey for both of us too, to be quite honest, because I've probably always gone through a very dour sort of person, hard, you know. Uh, well, I thought Terry Denham has probably been one of the best captains I've ever had. And you wouldn't have thought that possibly Terry and Jim are the same sort of people, and yet they'd probably only come from about an hour and a half to two hours away from Mungary to, to Canberra. So it's quite amazing when you're a coach, all the different sorts of guys you coach, and that end up becoming leaders for your club. But uh, and those two guys, we've had, um, you know, chalk and cheese, and they've both been sensational. Yeah, our relationship's a lot different to, to what it used to be. It used to be, uh, you know, I didn't understand where he was coming from and, and probably used to criticise him a bit for that, but um, I just respect him for the way he, he has um, reinvented himself again and, uh, and handled, handled me through a time of a very difficult time myself, and I really respect him. As Essendon's remarkable unbeaten streak continued, there was always a close eye cast over their captain. While there weren't signs of the haunting injury, Heard still deserved extra care. Heard's off the ground, Durst, move too. <laughs> and his grandfather ring up and say, leave him on the ground. I said, well, no. <laughs> and, and I love, you know, Alan Senior, but our job to get him to a final series and then let him cut loose. And he did. By July, Essendon were in territory all their own. 20 consecutive wins in a single season had never been achieved before. The pressure was building as speculation intensified that this team could sweep season 2000. All the pressure and the outside influences, we just enjoyed going out there and playing football with a close bunch of guys and uh, the most important thing for us was to go out there and enjoy every every game and try and get the best out of ourselves. And uh, I mean, the self-belief amongst the team was fantastic. Just as a football miracle appeared possible, along came Terry Wallace, his Bulldogs... The doggies have got him rattled here. ..and the most intense version of football flooding we'd ever seen. Oh, look 
Look at all the doggies. White shorts. Look at the white shorts there. Over yeah, sure. left foot. He kicked the goal to bring him back into the game. Got it's it. a Got great it. kick. He's kicked it. A magnificent effort. Many believe the defeat would ease whatever implied pressure came with consecutive victories. But there are others who are just as adamant it would have made little difference at the end of the day. And the great run has come to an end. But it wouldn't have hurt us, really. It would have sounded a lovely fairy tale story. But I'll take the premiership. The agenda this team shared would see them finish the home and away season five games clear of their nearest opposition, Carlton. They'd won 21 of the 22 games, showing their dominance with an average winning margin of nearly 50 points a match. They entered the 2000 final series one of the hottest premiership favourites in the game's history. And it was there that the final act of this season-long drama would be enacted. Well, that caps off a wonderful home and away season for the Bombers. When 70,000 people journeyed to the MCG for the qualifying final encounter between the heavyweights Essendon and the Kangaroos, Few were ready for what occurred. Handball to McGeary. Good kick to Barnard. Sweeps the handball out wide. Mercedes misses it. Goes for it and kicks it. Essendon, almost inconceivably, took their football to yet another level. Get him. He's got him. With James Hurd supreme at full forward, Joe Mercedes driving the machine through the midfield, and Matthew Lloyd surging towards his 100th goal for the season. The Bombers slaughtered the defending champions. Turns him inside out, comes across to Hurd. Has he got him? Yes, he has. Annihilations have rarely come so complete. Out to Long, Long scoops it back. Hurd, brilliant, magnificent start. Lloyd at the full forward line. Johnson is a goal. Long, I go long. Thank you, Michael, for coming. Held it away by McCartney. Mercedes, Mercedes goes for it, wobbles it, floats it, and puts it through again. Towards full forward, spills to Long, to Lloyd, Matthew Lloyd, goal! Longfield gets it to Mercedes, to Jason Johnson, loads it up, it's a chance, it's through again. They can't do anything wrong. The kick came out to Long, he's got uh, metres. In front, look at him trying to again set it up to Heffernan over the top. Gary Moorcroft, little kick, unselfish Carousella. He can play on. Goes in, and this is absolutely <laughs> rubbing soft into the room. Into the goal square, that's been marked by Barnes. Oh. Now, see you later. See you later, Joe Mercedes. I think they're trying their hardest, they probably are, they certainly did early, but they are just being carved. Buick to Long, who has been so creative, he is a genius at work. To Moorcroft, they are just killing them off again. Another one. Just 22 years of age. History. He's got it. I've never been involved with a team that's beaten another top side by that, that sort of score. Um, and, ah, oh, look, it's probably all started back in the, in the, in the middle of the 1998 season when uh, you know, our club was called a soft club and I got into a marshmallow sort of fun put on the table and let's blow the table up and get on with life because if people were walking around football calling us a soft club, then we had to eradicate that straight away. So. I'd say ever since that happened, ever since that final happened, I think Essendon's become a better club and we've made sure that we've steeled ourselves for anything that's come at us. As much as this is a team game, it's worth dwelling on Hurd's achievement to this stage of the season. By now it was easy to forget where he'd been in the previous three years. In the midst of this stellar finals performance, he was still being haunted by the problems he'd suffered since 1997. Twice in the previous four years, the Dons had let grand final bursts slip by a point. They had two weeks to think about the opportunity before them, and they would do everything in their power to ensure that it didn't happen again. Carlton's shock qualifying final loss to Melbourne 
meant that a semi-final win by the Blues would thrust them back in the bomber path a week before most had anticipated. And that's just what happened. Carlton's win over Brisbane set the scene for one of football's classic rematches. Carlton gets another crack at Essendon. For Hurd, however, life would deal him yet another testing hand. On the eve of the Carlton final, Hurd's 16-month-old daughter, Stephanie, suffered a seizure. She was rushed to the Royal Children's Hospital, where she was admitted immediately to intensive care. Her short life was threatened. Football and all the battles fought by James Hurd suddenly disappeared. And we spent most of Friday night in there and Saturday and Sunday in there and then she was put in a proper, a normal ward till Monday and we took her home. But um, it was a pretty emotional time for her and really put into perspective, um, you know, what football's all about when you've got your little girl in hospital. I, I left it entirely up to him and he didn't want to play in the morning, but then the doctor came in and said that she was out of, out of life-threatening danger and that he should feel happy to play. Um, and she was very doped up by then anyway, so I was very happy to, to have her with me and, and I thought at that point he should play. Sheeds came into the hospital about 10.30 that night just to see how my daughter was and, um, and I, I didn't, until I saw him I thought, you know, we have actually got to go and have footy on tomorrow and he didn't even, he didn't put pressure on me to play, he didn't say you're going to play or anything, he just um, came in just to see how the baby was and I thought it was pretty good. I wouldn't ask him that, that's not my question. He does, and I have no problem with him. He hadn't played in the preliminary final at all. Um, I'm just there for Jim and his family. Somehow, Heard was able to gather himself for the following day's epic. What had come earlier in the home and away series counted for naught right now. Undermanned, the Blues might have been, but underestimated by the Bombers, they would never be. And this game was the one that was going to get get those demons out of, our, out of ourselves and, uh, and so that was probably more than motivation rather than revenge, just removing the bad memories of last year. James Hurd was good against Carlton, but it's easy to appreciate that part of him was elsewhere at stages throughout that match. The brilliance that he had displayed against the Kangaroos was missing, but he had led from the front on a day of real significance for the Essendon of season 2000. Bombers are through. It'll be the Bombers and the Demons. The Bombers had worked their way into their first grand final since 1993. They were now tiptoeing the edge of legitimate greatness. And one man's comeback against the odds had only the final chapter left to write. AFL Grand Final Week speeds by for so many of us. A blaze of colour, of noise and motion. It is an event that Melbourne loves. When James Hurd sat in that open-air car as part of the Grand Final Parade, not only could he see his dream, he could hear and smell it too. It wasn't just a moment for the players, but for their families as well. There'll come a day where... Uh... I won't be here and my family will say, well, do you had a bit of fun with Dad? And it's all on video. How often do you see your mum and Dad? How often do you see your, your kids and your wife? Do you see them as much as normal people do? Um, and the reason you don't see them is because you're trying to achieve this goal. And if you're trying to achieve this goal and you don't win it, how can you go back to your families and say, well, look, guys, I got halfway there, but it probably wasn't worth not spending the time with you, you guys. And that was a, a pretty strong message, I think. Essendon's big day had finally arrived. Their opposition, Melbourne, may have been underdogs, but the Bombers weren't going to give them any ground whatsoever. Leading from the front was their skipper, James Hurd. Yeah, when you see him run through the, the banner, you knew that uh, the opposition were for, they were in for hell. Barnes contests, Hurd snaps, James Hurd bends it back for the Bombers. Is it enough? I think he started the run. He has! To Lucas McCurry is there, so to Carousella. Carousella into the open goal! 
McCurry, the ball, McCurry's gone. Terrific tackle, not pink. Lloyd's going to kick a goal, and he does. Barnard can kick a goal. 49 metres out. He's enjoying the goal today, and he's got another one. That's number four. They won the way you'd like them to win. And uh, killer instinct, hard, physical. Well, it's on here. This could be a defining moment as Melbourne Ooh. players streaming in. You know, the best part about James Hurd is that when he sees his team in trouble and he'll be playing the forward line, he'll, then he'll throw himself on the ball to get the momentum going our way again. And you don't see that, that many traits in, in, in players these days like that. With him also was Alessio. Hurd's running the boundary line. He just kept it in play. Lloyd back to Carousella. Clever! Beautiful. I thought it was one of the best performances I've seen as a footballer. So Phoebe comes wide for Nicholson. Oh! Hurd, brilliant. In short, when you've got a grandson like that, you're proud of him, much. That's me. If dreams are meant to have happy endings, then this one had the happiest of them all. For the closing 20 minutes of the grand final, Heard knew what was coming after that siren sounded. Chances are, as he wandered about the MCG during that final quarter, with the game safely locked away, he thought about all the pain, all the doubt, all the fear that this might have passed him by. And he smiled. And he laughed. Kevin Sheedy joins Dick Reynolds as the most successful club in over 100 years at this famous club. And they have won their 16th premiership. And is there a better story than James Hurd? This premiership had been a long time coming for this group of players. Rarely have flags been so meticulously planned. Rarely have such plans been so effectively realised. The tag for the final chapter then came. James would win the prestigious Norm Smith medal awarded to the best player on the ground. Thank you to the supporters, you have been fantastic. Thank you to my teammates, you're the best bunch of blokes you could ever meet. And to my wife, Tanya, and my little baby, Stephanie. This is for you guys, thank you. We have a lot of people um, there that we could play for our, the game for our wife, for our, our mother, our father, our, our kids. Sometimes you just gotta do something for your family. Because, you know, football just takes it out of you. I wasn't crying. I must look like I'm crying a fair bit, but um, I, I was. I was emotional. I was very emotional, but I wasn't um, crying. But it, it was a, it was such an important moment to me, and to have these two people, special people, there with me was, was pretty good. There has been much said of this magnificent season. There's been much said also of this Essendon team's rightful place in history. With James Hurd still realising his dream, who knows what lies in store for this angelic footballer? and this powerful football team. Well, I mean, there's no real reason why um, we can't have a successful next year or two, and he needs to be captain then. So I think with the years that he's missed, maybe he just might get a double reward. Whatever goals James sets, he gets. So I'll be interested to hear his next one. And if James stands up, then I think there's every likelihood that the club will stand up and will be very, very competitive in 2001. I wouldn't rule anything off of James. I don't know, he might be running for Prime Minister in a couple of years, I don't know. If he keeps you know, going ahead the way that, that he always has and, and facing football in the way that he has and works hard at it, I can't see why he can't continue to succeed and, and get as much enjoyment out of the game as he has up to this date. I'm glad I went through what I went through now because of Saturday, or because of this year. Um, this year, I, I just appreciate the players I played with and the team and, and I appreciate the success we've had on the weekend so much more than I've, I've appreciated anything else in my life, you know, just because it, it took so, so much hard work to get to. You know.